A 10 kilogram box slides 10 meters down a 30 degree ramp at constant velocity. We want to find the work done by gravity, work done by friction, work done by normal force. So let's draw a free body diagram for it. It's going to have weight call it FG. Whenever we're on a ramp, we want to create a new x direction, which is aligned with the ramp surface, usually. So that's going to create a component of FG that looks like that. And then we'll have that component, FGx. There'll be a normal force which would point up like that. And now they even said it was at constant velocity. And if it's at constant velocity, then there must be a frictional force too, FK. That's the complete free body diagram. This thing's awkwardly turned. All right, so. Now let's figure out the work that each force does. First, I'll try the work done by the normal force. All right, it's a 10 kilogram box. So let's go ahead and find out how big each of these forces is. All right, so it's a 98 Newton weight. If that's 98, then we're on a 30 degree angle ramp. So FGX will be given by 98 sine 30, which is 49. And so if we're at constant velocity, then the kinetic friction has got to be 49 too. We have to balance. FGY will be 98 cos 30, which is 84.9. And that means that FN is 84.92, because they have to balance. Now that we have those forces quantified, the normal force will do a work given by fn dot delta r. Well they're saying that you know the the magnitude of delta r here is 10 meters. And it all points in the x direction so we get 84.9 newtons in the j direction dotted with 10 meters in the i direction is the idea because those are ways to express vectors right so then we need the magnitude of the one vector times the magnitude of the other vector but then times the cosine of an angle between them but what's the angle between them it's 90. Cosine 90 is 0. So the normal force doesn't do any work. Let's see how much work the force of gravity does. So you want you want your Fg dotted with delta R. So one option is to find the angle between them two. It would be 60, because we've got like a 30, 60, 90 triangle going on. So we want the magnitude of the force of gravity, 98 newtons, magnitude of the displacement, and then we can do the cosine of 60 to get that, 49. 
joules. All right, now let's find out what the work is that's done by friction. Friction is going to be Fk dotted with delta R. So we want the magnitude of friction, which we said was 49 newtons, 10 meters of displacement, and we always put positives in for the magnitudes, but now we need cosine of an angle. And the cosine that we need to do is going to be for an angle of 180 degrees. Why? Because the box slides this way. That's your delta R. But friction is always against motion. And so friction always does negative work is what ends up happening. Now it's important in many cases to find what's called the net work. So just like you can have a uh, in a force of gravity, a force of normal, a force of tension, different individual forces. But you can also have a net force. Same thing goes with work. You can have individual works done by different forces, but you can have a net as well. And so we have this formula. That the net work will be done by the work of one force plus the work of another force and a third force and so on. As many forces as you have. So for our problem, uh, we'll find the work by adding the work of the normal force, the work of the gravity, and the work of friction too. And we can see though that for us, we're going to have 0 plus 49 minus 49. And we get a net work then for this problem of zero. What's the meaning of that? Well, if you don't do any work, then your object's speed stays the same. If we do positive work, we'll end up speeding our object up. And if we do negative work, then we'll end up slowing it down. So in our case, we have a situation of constant speed. And that tells us that no net work was done to this box.